Hi, Peter Charles here, Folk for Life, fly fishing. And in previous videos, I've talked about using a fly on the, on the end of a spinning rod, and I have a number of videos up on that, which I'll put up in the cards. Over that way. That way. That way. There we go. Never remember which corner it's in. So these, if you wanted to learn about the rigging and how I fish, check out these videos. But I realized recently that I haven't really discussed the flies, I haven't discussed the rods, the reels, or the lines. So I thought, you know what, uh, let's pay attention to that. Uh, because I was out the other day, and I'll put that footage at the end of this video, and I was fishing this uh, black ghost right here. And I like this particular fly because it has special meaning for me. It was the very first fly that caught a fish for me back around 1969 on the St. Lawrence River in my friend's dad's little tin boat. I had a full sinking type three fly line. I cast it out as best I could, stripped it back and bingo, bango, bongo. There's small mouth on the end of it. Half decent one too. So I kind of like using it and I've caught fish on it in the past, but it isn't the best solution. Uh, yes, and uh, the video will show it to the footage at the end. I was thinking, when you want to try this technique, you probably don't tie your own flies. I mean, I tied all of these, but you probably don't tie your own flies, which means you have to go to a store to buy them, which means you have to know what you're buying. So I thought, let's take a few minutes to discuss that first and the good and the bad. So if you get a, a, a fly that looks like this with a feather wing, it's called a streamer. And if you get the same fly, but with a hair wing, a bucktail wing, it's called a bucktail. But basically they're all streamers and streamers do one of two jobs. They either imitate bait fish, which is what this little guy does. It imitates a little tiny brook trout, or it's an attractor pattern like this thing. I mean, uh, um, you might say it's kind of perch like, but you know, like that, is there a minnow in the bottle that looks like that? No. So you've got attractors and you have bait fish imitation. So right off the bat, you have to make a choice which you're going to use. They both work, but you know, what's a good first choice for you? And the second is the size and the type of hook. Now, one of the problems with these long shank hooks is that gape is very heavy and it's very far back on the fly. So what happens when it comes through the water, it tends to come through the water looking like that, which means the fish often hit the wing and miss the point of the hook, which was what was happening in the video. The other thing that uh, smallmouth in particular will do is they'll aim at the head. And if it's a small fish, it won't get that whole fly in its mouth. It'll hit the head of the fly and again miss the hook point. Or it'll stick the hook point out here somewhere. And as soon as it turns its head away, it comes out. So that's often when you feel that like momentary hookup, then it's gone. That's probably what's happened. So what I would suggest for people starting out and going into a store to buy some streamers is you avoid these long shank hook, the big long shank hook flies. They come with problems. And look at instead at these smaller bait fish imitations. These three here, that's a black nosed dace, rainbow trout, brook trout, and I've got a little brown trout on the rod here. Uh, if you can't find um, good bait fish imitations and they're only attractor patterns, then go with the small ones like these two at least you have a fighting chance of the fly remaining more or less level. So when the fish comes up and hits it, they, they hit the hook point, not just the wing. And the other thing is they're small enough that the fish comes from the side. They've got a good chance of inhaling the entire fly. You, you don't want to go too small because then the gape of the hook gets too small and it could be a problem with bass. But generally speaking, these little guys here will hook up a bass. Um, and I'll just show you the difference in two, si two sets of hooks here. They're both size two, but this is seven extra long and this one's three extra long. And the reality is if we're fishing for bass, the three extra long is a way better hook. And so that's what I'm suggesting with these smaller flies is they're three extra long hooks. And so our hookup rate with them is much better. And the other problem is with these long hooks, when the fish is working to get the hook out, it's much easier for it to lever the hook out and throw the hook. So generally speaking, I would say these look pretty, but don't bother with them. And that's basically what you're looking at. Bait fish imitations or small attractors. And then you've got a much better fighting chance of actually 
hooking a fish and holding onto them. Now, as far as the rigging is concerned, as I say, I've got the video showing the rigging, but what I do is I have them in these packs, already pre-assembled, ready to go, and I carry them with me on the water. And the reason why is I'm trying to use weights that will put the fly where the fish are, but not drag the bottom, not collect lots of weeds. And uh, the other thing I want to try to do is maximize casting, because I fish on a big river, I want to go as far as I can and still not drag bottom. So that sort of, uh, you know, it dictates the type of uh, rod I'm going to use, the size of the rod, the, the weight of, uh, of the bullet weight it can cast, that sort of thing. Um, so I want to cover a lot of water in many places, but as I say, it has to be balanced off against not dragging the bottom. So I'm going to show you the three rods I use, and I have a fourth one upstairs in the, ba in the garage, which is a nine footer which is often the best one to use because the length gives you the ability to uh, manage line on the water when you need to recover line quickly. You've made a cast way out there and you've got a big arc of line. You can really pull the rod sideways quickly to straighten that line out so that bullet weight doesn't go straight to the bottom. So there's some advantages to longer rods. But these are my short rods because they're easier to manage in my studio. That's why I brought the short ones down. So let's start off with the lightest one. And let's see if I can do this without banging anything. Okay, it's a G. Loomis IMX Walleye Universal Rod. And it throws a very light weight. A sixteenth to five sixteenths. It's not a heavy uh, action rod. It doesn't throw heavy weights. And I've just got, um, oops, there we go, a 2500 size reel on it, a Shimano Vanford. And I'm using 10 pound test Power Pro. And I use 10 pound because reality, you're fishing for smallmouth and I'm not fishing this in the cabbage. I don't need heavy line. And the 10 pound Power Pro allows me to fire this a huge distance. Shallow over there. You can see their overhanging tree. Well, I was level with it where it landed. That has got to be close to 200 feet away from me. So that's basically my choice when I'm going light. And there's my little brown trout um, fly that I was catching the bass on the other day. And as you can see, it's, uh, it it's still survives. They're, they're a durable kind of fly. So let me move this out of the way. We'll get the next one. This one is basically uh, the heavier version. It's a little longer, so it's a little bit more of a struggle. This is a seven and a half foot. And it's the IMX uh, steelhead hot shotting rod, but it's a light rod, a quarter ounce to a half ounce. I've got a uh, 3000 Stratic on it, and you can see on this one I'm using uh, fluorocarbon. And the last one is my salt water version, because I do this in salt water too. I have um, uh, caught some nice striped bass using exactly this technique, and this is my G. Loomis Greenwater GLX. It takes one quarter to three quarter ounce. And I've got uh, the 4000 Stratic on it with um, Max Quattro braid. Uh, tw this is the 20 pound braid. And uh, I've caught some nice fish. In fact, I'll put one up right now where I use this particular rig with a um, sand eel pattern and got some nice striped bass on it and the Monomoy rips. So this is a kind of rig that you can actually use it in salt water if you wanted to. Uh, I go down to Cape Cod carrying both spinning gear and fly gear because you can get into a situation where the wind is blowing or, uh, you know, you're in difficult circumstances and it's much easier to work a, f a spinning rod than a fly rod, but you still want to chuck a fly. And so this is, we were catching a lot of bass on these flies. So it's like, I didn't want to change uh, to something different because when I threw something big, I threw a big plug out there, they didn't hit it. So they were going after these flies. So it was smarter to use this rig than to you know throw and a bullet weight and a fly than it was to throw a big plug which they didn't touch 
So that's basically what I do. As you can see, I do it fresh water and salt water. I use seven, seven and a half foot rods, but I'll also use nine foot rods. Uh, most of the time I'm using braid. Only occasionally will I switch to fluorocarbon. And uh, my fly choices tend to go towards these realistic patterns, like the little brown trout, the little brook trout, the little rainbow trout, or small attractors. There is another option which I find doesn't work as well with spinning gear, but you have the woolly buggers and there'll be plenty of these when you go to the shops. Um, they're more for slower presentations. So if you want to, uh, you know, run a, a fly through very, uh, slower water very slowly and you're very lightweight, just keep it off bottom. Yeah, that will work out quite well. But generally speaking, you want something that looks like a minnow because your retrieve speed is relatively high compared to a fly rod. Even when we're retrieving slow, we're still moving that fly fairly rapidly. And these woolly buggers type flies just don't look as good when they're moving quickly. So, you know, as I say, that's a judgment call. You might want to try them. You might go into a fly shop and they recommend woolly buggers. Uh, that's fine. Uh, but you might be better off, I think, using something like this and uh, do better. And don't be afraid to tell the guy in the fly shop, I'm going to be using this on a spinning rod. You know, I've got it all rigged up. It works. Um, you know, if I really like it, I'll buy, come back and buy a fly rod, whether you do, you don't, whatever. But the idea is you want to get some advice as to the type you're going to use. And if you go to a department store, like here in Canada, we go to Canadian Tire, they've got a huge fishing department and they've always got a little section with streamers and fly, fly lines and the like. And yeah, just go through there. If you know what you're looking for, you can go into the department store or the hardware store which has a fishing department and pick up something like that. And then you're good to go. So let's take a look at this last little bit of footage. Uh, it just shows the problems with trying to hook fish on this Get it out here. Problems with trying to hook fish on that black ghost. And then I went to the brown trout version of that fly and started hooking fish with no problem. So it shows you that the fly design and the hook design does have a bearing, especially when the trout, uh, sorry, the bass are not very big. By the way, you can do this for trout too, by the way. I mean, fish streamers on a spinning rod with trout with no trouble. Okay, so let's take a look at some footage from just the other day where I first fished that long shank black ghost and then I went to the much shorter hook on the little brown trout and we'll see what happens. So here I am, you might recognize this run from other videos and I missed a fish, in fact I missed two hits on that one. There's a small one and a bigger one and no hook up at all, just whack whack and uh, probably either one fish hitting it twice or two, di two different fish. Whichever, there was two misses in that one particular bit. Now I'll make another cast and I've got weed on the, on the bullet weight, which is causing it to rise. Plus I'm coming over a boulder. So you get up welling water, brought the fly to the surface and you can see a fish smacked it right on top. Good solid take, probably a half decent fish, no hook up. So, you know, that was the long shank black ghost and, uh, I didn't hook up a single fish. I'm, I don't know, maybe half a dozen hits over that period of time, no fish. So we change spots. I go to the short shank, little brown trout and, you know, bang, go first hit, solid hook up, no problem. And I, I fish, I land the fish. So it really points out two things, uh, that the shorter shank hook is more reliable in, in the hookups. And generally speaking, go with realistic patterns, minnow imitations rather than attractors. It doesn't hurt to have an attractor like a Mickey Finn, which is red, yellow uh, pattern on the wing. Have one of those in your box. That's not a problem. But I wouldn't rely on those flies. I would look at more of the minnow imitations. And so if you see, especially if it has eyes, that's really a good one to get. And just remember, don't go for those really long hooks. Keep the hook short and you'll get more uh, reliable hookups and you'll keep your fish on longer. So give that a try. As I say, you've seen my other videos on how to do this. Now this one gets a little bit more into the flies and the gear and hopefully that puts the entire picture together for you. Cheers.